This video will be mainly concerned with linking and we will look at how to link in standard libraries and also how to link um, multiple object codes in your own program. But before we do that, let's take a quick look at the strtol method, that uh, function that we talked about at the very end of the last video. Okay, so this one, this uh, string um, to long function is interesting for a couple of reasons. First of all, what it does is it takes a sequence of numbers. And so in this test program, what we do is we have set up a string s. Remember, car star, we read, we can read that as string s is equal to, let me assign it the value, um, string. 1034 so remember this is four locations with four digits plus a null termination character so this is not a number it is an array of four characters and these are ASCII 1, ASCII 0, ASCII 3 and ASCII 4 followed by null termination and after that we declare another variable um, string called s error and we assign it null so that is it's a pointer to nothing so it's not, it's like it doesn't have a value right now. Next we have a variable i which is an int and we assign the result of strtol that is converts string to long and so what we're trying to do is we're going to try to convert this s to a long one of the other and so what's the main thing that this do, this strtol does is convert this 1034 into a single number which is 1034 10 or 10 10 uh, thousand thirty four so there's a big difference between the digits 1034 in a string and the number 1034 this function converts a string to a single int so that by itself is interesting because remember we set up a simple program with a loop to do essentially that um, but this is a lot more handy if you can if we have a sequence of character a sequence of digits as a string this function will convert it to an int okay so that's good but what's actually a little bit perhaps a little bit more interesting is note that the second argument to this function is the address of, remember ampersand means address of, so address of this string which is itself a pointer to character. So in, in essence what this is saying is that now um, we are passing in a pointer to a pointer to character. And is that possible? Yes. That's definitely possible and you can have any number of different levels and in fact that's how multi-dimensional arrays are created in, uh, in C and we will take a look at that later but for now we just want to quickly note that you have a pointer to S error which is itself a pointer to a character so therefore we have a pointer to a pointer to a character and you can see this clearly when you look at the man page for strtol this is the PSD version, but the Linux version should be pretty similar. So if you do a man strtol, note that the first um, parameter is a pointer to character, and the second one is a pointer to a pointer to character. So disregard the restrict part, uh, it's just uh, something that. Uh, Let's just not look at that right now, we'll look at it later. But note that the second point, second argument is a pointer to a pointer to character, and then the third argument is a base. So strtol converts a string in str to a long value, uh, and we can save, save it as an int, that's perfectly fine. I don't think we get any errors when we do that. And one thing to note is that the base is um, um, any base you want, except the most common base that uh, pe most people use is 10. 
Uh, and also note that uh, if you if you supply zero base, it's taken as decimal or base ten. So typically we don't use other bases. Although every once in a while we might use base eight for octal, base sixteen for hexadecimal. But that's about it. Okay. So interesting that we have a pointer to a pointer. You might have wondered maybe is that possible? Yes. Here's an example where. We are passing in a pointer to a pointer, and that's completely okay. And you can have any number of levels in general if you, you can set up your programs. Of course, it gets confusing if you have more than three. Okay, once this is done, um, we just print out this S, and then we print out the I that we get as a, a return value from STRTOL. So try this out. Make sure it works. I believe this will work. On, on Linux and in Mac OS X's stick to Linux I would say okay so now here we are with linking so let's say we want to use a math function like square root how do we do that remember in Java you have a math class and we say import well, actually we don't have to import math we just use math.sqrt and um, there we have access to the SQRT through the math class. In C, we don't have a math class. Remember, all functions are sort of at the same level. There is no method that belongs to a class. So there is no square root that belongs to a math class or anything like that. But there is a square root function. So it turns out that it's in the math, it's in a math library. And what we have to do is link to that math library. So the way we do that is, um, let's say we have a, a program where we use SQRT. We can compile it into object code, but it doesn't have the code for square root. To get that, we have to link it, and we have to do a second uh, compile step. And actually, the second compile step is just linking. That is, it's taking libraries, for example, the library that contains the printf function, and also we have to pull in the libm or the math library so it turns out whenever you have a library and a, whenever you have a dot a library it's called a static library as opposed to a dynamic library it's the name is usually lib followed by some number of uh, usually letters um, usually a word in the case of math it's just one single letter m for math and then dot a so a libm.a is a static library for math functions. And how do you pull that in? You pull that in by using the minus L flag at the very end with the M to indicate that you want the libm.a file. So that's, that's all you have to do. And you pull in all of the math functions, whatever you need, into your executable. So now this sq, let's say we call it sq, with this flag, we said sq has the square root function in it, also the printf and all of the code in your original sq.c file. Let's take a quick look at that. So here is our equivalent. We call it lex17-9. And how do we compile this? We say just like before, we say gcc minus o lex17-9 whatever you want to call it you don't have to call it that but the source code is in lex17-9.c like and so finally we need the dot ln okay so in the slide we did it in two steps just that's just to show you that um, when you have a file with function calls, at ex what we call external function calls, that it calls functions outside this C file, you can, you have the option of compiling it down to object code and then doing a second compile. And this time around, we take, we name the output sq using the sq.o file, that's the object code, and we pull in the math library. We can, comp we can compress this down to one step. We can do it in two steps. We can also do it in one step. 
on this particular system I get a warning but that's no big deal so warnings you can disregard usually it's usually telling you that uh, you should probably change something but in this case it's it's perfectly fine so it t it's telling us that there's an incompatible implicit declaration of built-in function square root so it's saying we're trying to use square root in a different way that's okay you can disregard that it'll work so you can select 17-9 and it prints out square root of 4 is 2 so everything worked so despite the warning um, I'm guessing this is fine I think the way to get rid of the warning 17-9.c is usually when you see warnings like that you usually want to include pound include some file I'm going to try that if that worked so what we were missing was on this particular system I'm not sure we'll need that on a Linux system on, a, on this BSD system add that lib I'm um, sorry math.h compile with the minus lm to pull in the math library and you're all set no warnings everything works this thing works too it works fine with um, without including the math function but yeah you get that warning okay so let's say we have now two c files and this is pretty common when you write bigger projects not everything will be put in one file and the C convention is to put each function into a separate file just like in Java we put each class in a separate file in C it's small it's a uh, smaller units we put each function into its own file so I have uh, set this up here is one and here's the other so let's take a look at the second one first it's a very simple function it's called compute takes an int parameter returns an int and what it returns is the parameter times one minus uh, parameter minus one take a look at the at one dot c it uh, pound includes stdio.h so that it can do use printf and then the next thing that's probably different from most functions that we or most programs that we've seen so far is that it has what looks like a method without a body and this is called a function uh, declaration so this is saying somewhere we will have a function called compute which returns an int and takes as parameter an int and you don't have to specify a name here and if you do it's, it doesn't make a difference and after that is um, the main function where we use the compute so you all you have to have this function declaration above the main or before the main the function um, definition is here and somewhere else so this is the declaration and this is the definition and so the way it works is you can compile each one separately 1.c gets compiled to 1.0, 2.c gets compiled to 2.0, and then you can link them together finally in uh, in one step. So let's try that. GCC minus C, 1.c, and GCC minus C, 2.c, and let's say GCC minus O. One, one dot o, two dot o, and there we have it. We can run one, and we get the result. So once again, this is the picture. Compile one, compile two, and link them together. 